live and go catching up on the chat on YouTube right here. Let's see, getting it. We are live and transition, transition right there. Hey, everybody. See, just waiting for this to catch up. Come on, catch up. There we go. We're getting it. This is all good. We're learning. We're, every time we do this, we're, we're learning. So, hey, before we start talking about that, let's go ahead and say welcome to everyone, one and all, that are sticking with us and having fun during this kind of crazy time. Uh, every time we do this chat, you know, do this synth talk, and welcome first off to synth talk episode 19. Episode hey. 19, Scott. Remember that song in the 80s? I guess 19. Don't, 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 don't. Okay. I digress. All right. So what is it? Squirrel. Anyway, let's say let's give a shout out to everyone that's up here. Mark Tronics, I see. He says, let's do this. You know, and then I see Tartog Pond. It says, all right, all I can say today and fill my cup of knowledge and maybe a shot of tequila, too. Hey, as long as it's legal and you're drinking responsibly, you do what you got to do to leave. You know, Scott, I think that would help maybe sometimes when we're uh, learning and stuff. Let me see. Oh, let me see if I can. The Scott cam. Oh, let me turn off the C. I'm trying to get this transition to work, Scott. Not I'm, working. Well, no, it's working, but I have to actually press transition when I bring you in. And I'm like, I just want you in, you know. So, mm -hmm. see, there, there you're on the screen now. So, that's cool. All right, let's give another shout out to everybody i see dimapic studio he says yes waiting thought today was at 3 p.m it was hello and uh it was and i'll tell you why what what's going on in a second uh enzo shout out to enzo and let me hold on let me switch to our where we share the screen scott i think that is right there boom so we're both on the screen uh so shout out to enzo hello hello to bella lagosi what's up uh see scott said we'll start in a minute Bella says, nice background picture. That would be insane. A Jupiter Phantom split look and function keyboard. Yeah, that's crazy. What would you call it? A Jupitom or a Phantoper? I just call it crazy. Okay, <laughs> just, just call it crazy. That's just too much uh, synth architecture in one. It's like, it's just not right. Okay, shout out to Chris. Let's see. Oh, I almost thought. I'm trying to see through my chat real quick. Let me make one more adjustment. All right, cool. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I can see. Uh, hi everyone. So that's from uh, Wags, Wags U to B. It's awesome. I love these names. Christopher Fry, what's up, dude? Hello, everyone. Cape Town is cool. So that's what he's saying. I, but the sharks have gone north for the winter. Look out! Oh, I guess it's swimming season in Cape Cape Town, and you don't have to worry about the sharks having a little, little thing. What's up to Robin in Calgary? Squirrel time! Squirrel and. Actually, uh, we'll, we're going to talk about Squirrel in a little bit. And then Tim H. Hey, Tim, what's up? How are you doing? Uh, and Enzo said Solar System 10. All right. So uh, everybody, welcome. We're going to have a special guest. We're going to bring on special guest Jim Daniker in a little bit. I'll reach out to him to let him know we're going to bring him in. And we have, Scott is coming via Skype. So that's the first time we're doing that via Skype. So we're kind of having fun. But then also... But also, it's like uh, today I was having trouble, you know, myself, like getting not really motivated. Well, maybe it's a little bit more. What do you think, Scott? Was I kind of like, eh. no, I, I think we're just hitting that point to where we're starting to just drop. Uh, you know, we're 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 constant. It, it doesn't stop, which is great. It's awesome. But I think it's a, it's just that our bodies are, are saying, dude, slow down. Yeah, well, it's it's more of the mind, you know, because uh, we're 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 creating a lot of content on here, but then on Facebook and then uh, through other the rolling sites and other things. So it's just like, Ugh. and then right now I know we're both Scott and I are both learning uh, OBS and just really digging in and trying to bring you some cool stuff. You know, like I just learned, and let's see if let's see if it does it. I'm trying to. I was. I'm. I'm still learning, but hold on. Let me turn. Let me see. Hold on. Swap from. I'm trying to. I'm still learning stuff where I can bring in and out different things. Like I could bring in, uh, you know, my name or Scott's name and stuff like that. Or like, of course, Roland at home. You know, so tag Roland at home. So I'm learning how to bring all these different shortcuts in. And Robin said she said squirrel. 
going to learn how to bring in squirrel. So we're bring, I'm going to bring in probably certain sound effects. Not going to be overly sound effecty, you know, if that's a thing. But just more fun. Just more fun, yeah. And the other thing, too, is we're trying Skype today with my feed. So I'm not sure how it looks or it sounds, but any comments, welcome. Yeah, it looks actually looks good when I'm watching on uh, YouTube Studio. Everything looks pretty good, you know. That's so uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, Tor Talk says, uh, oh, or like Tim H says, uh, "Hey Scott, is your shirt official Roland merch? Really like it." Yep. Yes, it, yes, it is. Um, I I don't know if it's available in the store, but yeah, it it is uh, official merch. Yeah, I don't even have one. It's that official. Nope. <laughs> Rude. And let's see. Tor Talk Pod says, "Need little Ed." Need little Ed and Scott statuettes for my RD. My back statuette uh, needs company. Uh, that could box. happen. Probably is box statuette. No, we could do that. Let's do <laughs> next time we can all get together with public people. We can go uh, get 3D, uh, print. 3D printed. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Let's see. And Robin says, yes, want some short and long sleeves Jupiter and Phantom shirts. Any out there yet? I think... Let me just find this. I have a Jupiter shirt. It's like a, a dark charcoal gray color that yeah. just has like the orange bar on it. Um, I did see from somebody, it popped up in Facebook, that does full hoodies that are like decked out. I mean, it's like the entire front panel of, a, you know, the keyboard, the Phantom or the Jupiter or something. I don't remember who did it, but they look pretty wild. Yeah, there's there's a lot of merch out there that's uh, kind of cool. You know, Roland's doing the, the majority of it, but I know there's some people that are doing some a little extra on their own, which is pretty cool. Shout out to ZT Audio. I see you guys out there. Howdy to you guys. Uh, yeah, so we're working on stuff. So uh, today is the 19th episode, and we're going to have uh, probably re really shortly, I'm about to send him a text, is Mr. Jim Daniker out here and see uh, if he's ready for me to call him on FaceTime. Let's see. Can I call you now? And, you know, he's busy. You know, a lot of guys in the that aren't on tour, they are actually um, they are actually doing a lot of production work. Like we just saw. I th how many of you saw that Prince uh, tribute concert last night? I missed it because I I'm I well, was I on the phone with you? No. Yeah, I was on the phone with uh, on a video call with Scott and somebody else uh, teaching Phantom. <laughs> so. Uh, going over some more phantom stuff. So it was it was pretty cool. All right, Jim gave us the thumbs up and shout out to Zeke. Since I see it, but I don't read your language. So, but I appreciate. Hopefully, it's a nice comment. Uh, let's see. Tim Eight says, "Great story." Roland Germany contacted me today after learning my Roland backstage tickets did not go through to them. Thanks to your colleague from India who contacted them. Really appreciate this. Awesome. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah, Roland is actually one big giant family uh, trying to figure things out in here. So hold on. I'm going to try and bring in, if I can see. There it is. I'm going to try and bring in Jim and through FaceTime. And hold on. i just open it up. Hopefully it doesn't crash everything. And let me see if we can bring in Jim in here. Hold on. Dun, dun, dun. We've never done this. We've got Skype running, and we're about to have FaceTime running. FaceTime's thinking. FaceTime's thinking. It's like, hey, bro, you can't use FaceTime and Skype. <laughs> could be. It could be. You know, okay, let me move some windows, and we'll probably have to move some stuff over here, too. All right, it just opened up, and and then we're going to get into some more. Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of time with Jim, and let me type him in here and see if it brings it up. And FaceTime is thinking. Stay, FaceTime is like, yo, bro. Okay, no. All right, let me see if we got Jim. I pushed the call video and dun, 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 dun. Hey, Scott, tell them, talk to a little bit to the people while I try and get Jim on the phone. What's going on in the sure. chat? Cause I'm, let me focus on this. And sure, sure. Sure. Again, welcome all. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. I can't tell you again, how much we appreciate just the, the camaraderie, the help, uh, all of it is just it's just a really really good time so today it's like we're set up again i've got the jupiter x on my table uh, which is here and ed's got the phantom so if you have any jupiter x or phantom questions this is great because we can pretty much address it right away uh with what's going on or we can just go through stuff or play sounds or or do whatever you guys want to do this is really 
informal, low, low key, chill, just kind of, you know, go with the flow. So just just keep us, let us know what you want, and we'll do the best to, to get you on the chat. Uh, other than that, um, just working on some different sounds, some different layers, just playing in the Jupiter X, absolutely loving it. Um, it just kind of oh. inspired me in a different way. You get them? I'm trying. Hold on. But I got I got the circle of death. Oh no. So is everybody having a uh, making the best use of your time at home? Uh, are lots of you still extremely busy like we are? Switch or... to your front cam. <laughs> yeah. Where's your front cam? Mine? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's on that right. thing. Just... I, thought, I didn't know who you were talking to. To you. Okay. All right. Yeah. But. So please talk. I actually blew up the chat this time so I can see it from a distance because the computer's over here. And, and before I couldn't do that. So that worked out real good. Um, again, on Skype. Hopefully it's coming out well. The view that I'm getting is very stuttery. Um, so I was just curious. Um, I, oop, I'm hearing something. Hold on. I'm trying. Okay. Take your time. We're trying. We're trying to get some stuff going. You know, that's the kind of the fun thing. Okay. Hold on. I ex okay. Everybody's still there? I see everybody's yeah, still alive. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. I'm just having a little bit of trouble with face. Time. Let me see. And okay, it crashed. Good. Okay, so hold on. <laughs> trying. Okay, let me see here. And trying to open FaceTime again. And do, 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 do. where is FaceTime? Open up FaceTime. Hi, Christopher. Spending lots of time in your studio, which is cool. So hopefully you, you're you're one of the lucky few that can kind of do what you want to do and and. Uh, have some time to create and learn new things. I mean, e even with as crazy as it's been for, for myself and Ed, we're still learning stuff and trying to see what's out there and, and uh, again, create another experience for you guys and, and just get better at what we're doing. Um, so it's it's definitely been been cool on that part. I always love learning new things and, and uh, kind of pushing things, you know? Yeah. Hold on. We're still, we're still working on it, so, you know, Hey, Scott, why don't you show him some stuff? Uh, you know, just kind of run it real quick while I try and get Jim on there. And as soon as I get him on there, I can kind of uh, jump in. Okay. Cool. Thank All you. Right. Okay, here we go. So, Cal, how you doing? Uh, bored and working from home, doing up contracts. Would love to see you guys play some arpeggiated bass lines with drums and some melodies in the right hand. I'm very much into 80s synth pop. Okay, and then we've got uh, another one uh, on the Jupiter XM under common tone edit. I'm having trouble understanding the correlation between categories and model sounds. All right, so um, where do I want to start here? Jupiter XM under common tor core. Okay, so basically, in 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 this one that uh, uh, Bella's asking, it, it's the same thing. Once you get into the model banks. You've got um, Jupiter, so I'll show you this screen, see if that comes up. If I hit this, the top one, I've got a Jupiter. If I hit the Juno, I've got the Juno 6, but the model button has to be pushed to go through that. Once you get into the part section, depending on which part you've assigned the model to, then you can change that. I'm sure you've got that and understand that. But once you get past these models, so up into the RD, and you start getting into the other buttons here, it's the same on the XM. Um, you'll notice that you start getting categories up here in the, in the top screen. And that's the Zen core, the common, common uh, core sounds that are in there. And you can move through them this way with the second encoder or use the number one to jump by tens. And you'll notice that even though this is a synth base, the category may change once you get up higher. So let's see. It should go, yeah. So now it's an electric bass, it's an acoustic bass, and then I would go to the next category by pushing the next button and, and go through the same thing. So uh, that's really where the difference is. Um, 
The model banks are going to be a little bit more restricted with what you can do with them, where uh, and depending on the model. Uh, and then the Zencore engine, you can pretty much do anything. So that's part of where the difference is. Um, what was the other one that I was looking at? Um, Jupiter, do play some aggregated baselines with drums and some melodies. Well, let's see what we can find in our scenes. Oh. oh wait wait wait! Come on, where's where's FaceTime? Where's FaceTime? I hear you. Hold on, where are you, FaceTime? Here it is. It's got you, Jim. Hold on, here we go. I'm connecting. It's connecting. Come on, it's it connected? Did it connect? I think it failed. Oh wait, it failed. <laughs> I'm. Yeah. I'm trying, well, Jim. Do you just want to get Jim on? Yeah, let me see. Let me try one last time. One last college try. And... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. ZT Audio. Yes, there's some stuff coming, but unfortunately, we cannot speak about it. Um, that's just where it's at. Um... But yeah, they, I mean, you can tell that they've planned for something if they put a sticker. This is a sticker. It's not silk screened. Oops, let me get the others. Yeah, this right here is a sticker. So that's kind of a hint of more things coming. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, right now you've already got over 4,000 sounds sitting in there between the model banks and the Zencore engine. So it's, it's quite a bit. Uh, Robin Cal. Uh, try starting at the 80 split screen. Yeah, it's a good place to start for what you're interested in. Absolutely. And and if you're updated on the Jupiter X to 1.20, I want to say it's in bank three or four. Maybe Robin remembers. Uh, it's up here. Doo -doo -doo. I will find you. I will. Uh, let's go into four. And let's find this. 80 split. So this is the 80 split right here. And basically, let's see what parts are in it. Don't forget to it, change your screen. It has two, yeah, it's got two layers. So part one, that's the drums. The synth, and part two is the bass. So if you put those two on and you turn the arpeggiator on, you get your 80s i mean you don't even have to think twice about that one there's another one that i really like that was back um you know like the arpeggiations and things and i want to say it's in scene three 13 yeah this saw stack is great for a lot of different things you got that you know you got that idea or just a really good poly synth but if you engage the I arpeggiator in it and go ahead and turn on some other parts. So right now there's only two parts that are layered, um, but I'll, I'll add in a bass part as it goes by. So we'll just go ahead and turn this on.
So oh. just fun stuff. But yeah, that's, you know, the arpeggiator, the dance, the, there's a bunch of that stuff in here. But some of the other stuff that I get attracted to is uh, just kind of creating like my own thing. So I put something in 15, one. Hey, Scott, hold on. I am going to try and get uh, Dan, uh, Jim Daniker on the phone now. Hold on. Let's see, try it this way. Let's see if we got it going. Can you hear that, Scott? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay, let me go ahead and switch some stuff. And we'll get it back on there. Get it going. Hello. Hey, Jim. Hi, it's Ed Diaz and Scott Berry, and you're on Sith Talk. <laughs> hey, Jim. Hey, guys. What's happening? Hey, so we wanted to just reach out to you and talk. We were trying to get you on video, but I'm, I have Scott on Skype. Scott on Skype. And oh. and then I was trying to bring you in through FaceTime, but FaceTime was like, uh-uh. So, <laughs> so I'm, you know. It happens. Yeah, you know, all of us are just really learning this, and I'm, I'm just adjusting stuff as we're talking. But we wanted yep. to bring you out here because, you know, you're doing, uh, you have the, uh, you're doing a live stream tonight, and I wanted to really yep. make it so people can see that that you're doing. You know, that's pretty cool. Awesome. So, uh, so tell us, tell us about that. What do you got going tonight? That well, would... long story short, I, I'm always getting. Um, inundated with calls and texts and stuff from from all my producer and artist buddies who you know for whatever reason they know i'm a tech nerd i guess and, and so oh, i'm yeah. always up on you know latest stuff and so people are always just calling and asking you know what's your opinion on this and what about this new keyboard and so you know i thought um about do you know since everybody's doing this live streaming stuff and I just kind of retooled my entire studio a couple weeks ago. I thought, you know, it might be a good time to just get everybody in one place and kind of had just have a group chat, talk about all this stuff. You know, guys, yeah. you know, we all love talking shop. And um, you know, now that I've got some of these new keyboards in, uh, I'm slowly figuring out how to play that stuff in real time through OBS and have it sound good. Yeah. Um, you know, and with the Roland stuff in particular, um, I'm still learning my way around the Jupiter X, especially and the, and the new Phantom. And um, just a couple nights ago, I started really digging through the vintage models. And I thought, okay, this first episode really needs to be, I, I really want to hammer this idea that, um, you know, people are always saying, well, is it analog or digital? And why doesn't Roland make, you know, <laughs> a, 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 you know, basically an analog Jupiter eight, you know, and the reissue, and, you know, we're whatever brand. And I'm just like, man, that's one thing I really am passionate about is just kind of educating people on look in the right places, you know, in terms of priorities. Um, stop asking whether it's analog or digital and yes. yeah. just listen to it, you know. And, um, so anyway, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about tonight. Just kind of go around the studio a little bit. I've got every, all my keyboards routed into logic so I can play anything from one spot. And, um, but I'm going to actually, I'm setting up a multicam, uh, thing. And one of them is focused on the Jupiter X. Oh, and, great. uh, so I'm going to spend a few minutes on that and just, you know, let people hear some of the stuff I, that I don't think they've heard based on all the, the YouTube videos and stuff that I've seen. And, um, you know, so it's gonna be fun just talking shop and answering questions and, letting people hear some fun stuff and having a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry, please. Oh, no, no. I just said the same thing. Yeah. It, it's what's cool with the instruments, especially something like the Jupiter X, you know, you, you have some people are like, Oh, the arpeggiator is great. And others are like, oh, I'd never use it and so on and so forth. But the thing is, is that what's so cool about this instrument is that the way that I'm going to play it or do it is going to be different than the way you do it, Jim, which is going to be different than sure. the way Ed does it. And it just kind of brings new life. And the more things that are out there, uh, you know, on YouTube and live or on Facebook or whatever, again, just yeah. breathe something else into it. And it's, it's to me, that's the makings of a good instrument or, or a great instrument yeah, is sure. that if I can get what I need out of it, you get what you need and they're completely different. Yeah. 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 It, it really is that particular one. Um, you know, it, it's, in some ways, it's tough to wrap your head around because, you, you, you know, if you just go by the front panel, it's, you know, it looks simple, and yet there's a lot under the hood. And, yeah. um, you know, and 
I just think it's it's a gold mine. It's worth digging through. Absolutely. And, um, especially if you're into you know the old vintage stuff that that we grew up on. Um, my word, I mean, you know, I've got that and the System Eight right above it, and uh, it's like between the two of them, you could do the whole Stranger Things soundtrack. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. and yeah. Um, it's just such amazing sounds, and and the the, the modeling quality is top notch. So. Yeah. Anyway, it's fun. Yeah, fun stuff. Absolutely, Jim. And I know, I know that uh, you know for years. Every, that's always a question: Is it real analog? Why isn't Roland doing real analog? And you know, it's you know, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it gets on my nerves because uh, to be honest with everybody, it gets on my nerves because it's like I know at Roland when the keyboard product guys we get together and we'll come up with something new like this, and you know, we will start messing with the filters and really kind of just yeah. just bring up the filters and kind of just get that going. And, and what we want to hear the squealing. And we're trying to hear stepping. We're trying to hear yeah, stepping. Right, right. And so yep. even on some of the more inexpensive synthesizers, the stepping issue uh, is no longer an issue. <laughs> it really isn't. Yeah. But right it, but it's just like there in everybody's mind that they're like well if it's not analog it's crap you know and it's just like yeah, right. um, and so i'm just like wait a minute Th really listen and understand and then i know yeah. i and, and you know i'm not dogging any of the old stuff or any of the new stuff but it's just like i tell people because they'll say well analog is warmer i'm like okay great okay cool i'm not going to argue yeah. with you but i'm like well if that's the case and tubes is the thing uh, do you still use your tube television? Because wouldn't the picture be warmer right. as well? You know, right, right. so <laughs> yeah. and, and if you're that h hardcore into it, then you should be using a tube television and throw away your 4K. So I go in and, and when I go there, I'm like, well, if we've come that far in resolution with video, do you not think yeah. that the audio guys have also grown? You know, the resolution. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. that's one thing I I always always push i'm like enough yeah <laughs> enough yeah, yeah it, it's really funny i mean you know i don't go on gear slots much anymore but no. but that used to be the place and you know i use that as an example because there's a massive thread there about you know ever since the jupiter x came out and and of course you've always got those guys who they it's like they spend their lives arguing about that stuff yeah and at the end of the day i'm like okay i'm over here making music you know because it sounds right. good. First of all, I don't have the time to sit around and, and, you know, have these academic arguments. I was just talking to a friend of mine this afternoon who has a, a Jupiter 6, an old one, you know, original. And um, it, we were just talking about this stuff. And, you know, it's like, man, it, it, that's just really not uh, – I guess here, here's how I'd say it. I wish I could put some of these guys in a room and blindfold them and play – the original Jupiter 8 and the Jupiter X and SP, and, and tell them, okay, smarty pants, tell me which one's which. <laughs> because, you, you know. You, you did this, you didn't did. you, Ed? You did this in a store. There was a Jupiter yeah. 8 and a System 8. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually uh, someone, a store did this to me, and it's a vintage store. I won't say anywhere anything else about it because people will figure out where it is. But yeah. I brought in the System 8 at the time. It was yeah. a System 8, yeah. and, you know, say, so, hey, it's a Jupiter model, blah, blah, blah. Sounds great. It sounds great. There's this, this, the whole condition on it. And they're like, well, you know, because these, these guys are great guys, but they always poo-poo any, any of the yeah. stuff, and it just gets on my right. nerves. And they're like, we happen to, we actually happen to have a Jupiter 8 here that was just on repair, and it's completely – it's yeah. it's clean now. Uh, yeah. And so they said, let's pull it out. And so they pulled out the Jupiter 8 – Versus at the time, and this was probably like what four or five years ago now, versus the System Eight, and mm -hmm. and and we put well, I let them do it. I just stood back, let them do it to what they want. They put it on the same oscillators, yep. put everything exactly the same, even got the same kind of volume level between the two, mm -hmm. and they just went through holding down chords and the whole checking it out, yep. and it was like, and you could see them uh, their face going. Well, you know, and it's like, dude, seriously. Yeah. And the funny thing is when they were doing they were talking to me what that while they were holding down a cord on the system eight, this was completely Jupiter eight modeled, uh the yep. system eight drifted in the tuning. 
it drifted mm-hmm. in the tuning in there and you know you know any of you guys that when you feel the keyboards drift in tuning it's kind of like yeah, a tickle yeah. you're like what what is that you know and so the yeah, guy said right. did that just drift he, he, he was just like what and so yeah it, it was it was like yeah bro <laughs> it's just called condition yeah. and 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 so uh so they begrudgingly were like well this is it's pretty good, I guess. You know, and I'm just like, dude, yeah. it just did it yeah. stuff. Why are you, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's a losing argument. I mean, Absolutely. Guys like that, they're invested in, you know, it's a lot of times if they happen to have one of the old pieces. Well, another example, microphones, vintage microphones. Oh, yeah. I, I have, um, you know, some of the stuff the last couple of years, like, you know, uh, Asian Orient, uh, uh, Asian um or originated capsules, um, you know, like mim- mimicking a Neumann, you know, vintage mic or whatever. And a friend of mine has a $20,000, you know, U67, and I brought over this $300, uh, you know, mic. Oh, no. That modeled that thing. And I can't say his name because he's a big national yeah, producer. Don't say it. <laughs> and I, I had him talked into, can, can we do, I was recording an A-level, uh, well, I can say this, Cece Winans. I mean, she's a household name in the gospel music uh-huh. you know, world. And, um, you know, it was for a, a big, huge Christmas album. And I set both these mics up next to each other. I was going to record them and, just for my own entertainment. Yeah. And, but I was going to capture this on video. And I asked him, I said, do, do you care if I post this? And, because I really want to level match these and just let people hear and at first he, he was okay with it. And right before we recorded, he's like, you know what? I don't feel good about this because I, I think my mic is going to be better. But God forbid, if, if it sounds pretty indistinguishable from your $300 mic, this is my business. You know, yeah. like it's, I, I, this is one of my calling cards. People come to me because I have this $20,000 mic. And I just kind of chuckled. I'm like, see, that, that proves my point that people are invested in this stuff. And I'm not saying – that it's not if you've got the resources if you got 15 grand and you, you're on ebay and you see a jupiter 8 sure go for it well, grab it absolutely. but and, you know, yeah and that, if that, that is absolutely mean. what you want of course take it yeah but right 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 because you know on the other side of that coin there is something you know people ask me all the time now that i've got this room full of keyboards why do you have so many keyboards why not just have one controller and a bunch of software um and my answer is because yes, I could accomplish, you know, musically pretty much the same thing with just the control and software. But given the choice, number one, wouldn't you rather be surrounded by a room full of keyboards that you can wheel around? Because the main yeah. thing to me is it's how it inspires me. When I wheel over to, you know, um, a vintage synth, so like one of my, you know, my old Yamaha DX7 or the TX rack or, yeah. or the Jupiter X, or whatever, there's a way that you interact with it that it inspires you it's far better and differently to me than, than just twisting knobs in a plug-in. It's, it's just a whole different experience. And, and we also grew up with hardware, Jim, we're used to hardware. Yeah, I sure. prefer hardware over soft right. sense just for that reason, right. the tactile controls yeah. that are yeah. sitting right there at your fingertips. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and then it's also a whole other mindset. Yeah. And then also I did make the point one time, uh, uh, cause you know, I've had a guy say, well, you know, software is better, software is better, software is better. And I'm like, okay, you know, they're both tools in the, in the shed. That's fine. Software and, and, yeah. and hardware. But I, t- I, uh, I pulled, I pulled a common, uh, software that I'm not going to name just a common one that everyone would have, right. Just that, that, that's, that's been over the years. And I'm say, here's this, uh, this soft synth, uh, it's, it's, uh, version 1.5. And now that yeah. company is at version six, and yeah. that 1.5 version no longer works in my system. Okay, and yeah, so, right. So if right. I pulled it out and say, "Hey, Jim, let's jam on this," and you're like, "It's it doesn't work," and all this and that stuff. But if I pulled out, just insert a vintage synth or an older keyboard or a hardware keyboard. Uh, Ten years from now, that Jupiter X is gonna look at look. At, well, shoot, look at the Jupiter Eight. You know, for over thirty years right. from now, even if it's a even if it's a dead keyboard because of circuitry or something, and you just have it in your studio, as soon as you walk in and someone sees it, it ins- it inspires you immediately to like, oh right. wow, and you talk questions. But if I pulled out an empty uh, that box of that early version software, it really does nothing. <laughs> 
just right. nothing. Because because people always yeah. tell me stories about this keyboard. Because I have an old JX3P that's in the garage that unfortunately was flooded in, in Houston, uh, yeah. didn't survive the flood. But it's in the garage, and, and I'm going to clean it up. And I, I know as soon as I put it in my studio, hanging, just, you know, because it's I think they're just beautiful anyway, even though it's just wa- yeah. it's dead. Uh, I know whenever keyboard guys come over, they're going to be like, oh, I remember this. Wow. You know, so. Yeah. There's something about yeah. that. So, so yeah, it's yeah. totally cool. Real quick, Jim, I was going to say, some, a lot of the guys on here are really digging what you're saying. Uh, I saw somebody comment that they loved your studio tour, so that's uh, fun. that's wonderful. And you guys make sure, because I was just watching a studio tour the other night, and I, was, I, was, I, was, I, I wasn't as interested, Jim, in your keyboards, but I was interested in that stream deck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Those things, that thing is a game changer. I've had a lot of people ask about yeah, that. Yeah, for OBS uh, and other things? Yeah. My God. Heck yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's some of the best little, I think they were 150 bucks. I, yeah. I bought two of them, and now they make a one big, you know, one bigger version. Yeah. And, uh, th- man, the sky's the limit, stuff you can do with those things. Yeah. I'm about to pull so. the trigger and just just order one, but yeah, is, yep. yeah. You guys look that up. Stream Deck. It's just it's it, it, that tells how kind of techie nerds that Jim and uh, Scott and all, all of us are. We're like, okay, keyboards. I know keyboards. That's cool. Okay, ooh, what's that? <laughs> what's that? Squirrel, yeah. squirrel. squirrel. Yep. And, Anything that yeah. like you know that's a big productivity booster. I'm all about it. And, Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. El Gato makes those. Yeah, El, El Gato. Yeah, so so that's yep. that's a. This is not sponsored. We were just like, you know, I was just like, oh, I, yeah. I was. I, I, well, actually, I was telling Scott, hey, check out this thing, you know, for to make the OBS stuff easier and move scenes and this yeah. and that. And then Scott, you know, I told him he's like, oh, Jim just had that in his video. And he said, well, send me the video. And it's like, I was, I was like scanning through the keyboards. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, there it is. Let me yeah, focus, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. focus yeah. on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> move keyboards no hey well another shout out everybody's saying uh they agree with you so uh, a- the 80s fan he put i thought this was funny he says uh only people who noodle on synths worry about the whole our analog versus digital argument the rest of us oh, absolutely the rest of us yeah. who play music don't care i quit the vs exactly. i quit the vse forums four years ago for that reason and and, and yeah I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm guilty of being that guy sometimes too, you know? So, yeah. uh, yeah. Cause it's like, you, you know, and I know we've all had it. A lot of us out there, you know, you argue with me and argue with me and argue with me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Play something. You're like, well, I, I really don't play. Shut up. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Oh, it, you know, we talked about this a little last time. Like I've, I've gone through the whole gamut, like early two thousands, I sold all my keyboards. I could kick myself. Yeah. Cause now I had mm-hmm. to buy them all back. And that was because software was getting really good. I thought, man, game over. Software is so much easier. It's more convenient. And then guess what? Ten years later, half that software doesn't work anymore. It doesn't yeah. authorize anymore. And you're not going to have that problem with hardware. I mean, my DX7 is 35 years old, and it still works great. <laughs> I s- you know? I and, still uh, remember when that was play. new. I remember when that was new. I think I sold mine back in 2008 or something for 400 yeah. bucks, maybe. Yeah. 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 Hey, my favorite yeah. movie for all of you guys out there. I know we're talking about synth, synth movies. My favorite, and it's not a good. I mean, it's not a nice movie, but my favorite DX7 movie is stars Mark Harmon, and it's the Ted Bundy story. And it's <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because because right, Jim. If you if you guys find it, it's hard to find. You, you probably find it yeah. on YouTube now. But if uh, it's 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 Ted Bundy and it's uh, Mark Harmon. And I swear that the sound guys, the, the keyboardists back then, just opened up the box and used all the presets. I swear, yeah, totally. That's all. Yeah. The, all that movie was. And then, and then, yeah. I, I, I'm, that's kind of like a like. Oh, why did it have to be that movie? You know, because it's horrible. Yeah. But it's just like, <laughs> I like it because it's all yeah. DX7. No, you just yeah. brought something back. Back in the '80s, I mean, th- there was a movie, the movie Fame. Oh which yeah, was, yeah. Was big, and then they did a, a TV series off of that. And I remember the guy that was the uh, you know part of the orchestra or whatever, the Bruno. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno Jupiter. Martelli. Yeah, he had a Jupiter yeah. Eight with him yep. always in, in all those shots, and I remember watching that going Jupiter Eight, Jupiter Eight. You know. Well, I didn't even know what those keyboard. <laughs> I didn't even know what those keyboards were, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. 
you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, look, Robin, Robin in the in the chat says, Summer School was Mark Harmon's best movie. We're not talking <laughs> about Mark Harmon per se. No, no, talk, about <laughs> talk about Squirrel in the chat, Robin. So, <laughs> so, so that's cool. Hey, so Jim, I won't keep you too much longer because I know you're, you're, you're busy doing stuff. What... Uh, is there anything that you're currently working on, but you know, besides the music tech and the streaming, which is awesome, uh, is there anything other fun stuff uh, that you're doing that you're doing that you can share? And it's all good if you don't, because I know, I know a lot of artists would do stuff, but you know, the the MDs and stuff sure. can't share. Totally. Well, um, Michael W is keeping us busy. He's doing these weekly. Um, he's call- I think he's calling them worship around the world. Uh, and the- this past weekend was the first first one we really pulled the whole band in and a lot of you know, artists are doing this it was him and then each member of the band we all recorded our parts at home i sent everybody you know a guide track and they recorded their vocals or their instruments then they sent it all to me and i mixed it and then you know a video guy put the rest of it together yep. and those are going extremely well um i think people are really wanting to be encouraged it's a it's a depressing time and so uh, those are fun. I mean, I think he's been hitting about a million streams each on those. And then wow. um, thanks to the uh, – man, I tell you, the, this Roland – speaking of Roland and streaming, that VR – what's it called? We've got it sitting here. The VR1HD yeah. video mixer. Yep. That's the one I'm called, using. I think Ed yeah. knows what you use. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. But the other thing I'm really excited about, I haven't started it officially other than noodling around some ideas – I want to do like a big epic synth uh, instrumental album, uh, kind of a sequel to my Ad Alta record, which was mostly orchestral. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like film music, but this one, you know, since all the 80s stuff is still big right now, I really want to do just like an epic um, John Williams, Hans Zimmer meets, uh, you know, Jan Hammer and all the, all the killer 80s stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm guessing after our conversation, you're going to go rent a Jupiter 8 and a Jupiter 6. and No? Nope. I got everything I need right here, man. Yeah, there's... Yeah, there's... I, I'm, I'm happy with the Jupiter X. But I'll tell you what, having that made me go back and listen to the System 8 again. And <laughs> I, I've been telling everybody that has become one of my favorite synths of the last five years. Um, it, it just, especially when you load like the System 100 and some of those, you know, of course, Ju- Ju- uh, you know, Juno 106, Jupiter yep. 8 models are great. But now, of course, I've got those in the Jupiter X. So I'm loading some of the other stuff, like the JX3P and the um, – I love the System 100 model uh, from Roland Cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, man, those, those two alone are just ridiculous. Um, it sounds great. I love its own engine. Um, System 8 engine, yeah, it's fantastic. Good. And they added the What's FM. That? uh into it oh yeah right yep 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 yeah so anyway that those two things and then backstage pass i'm i'm working on a big expansion pack for that that's all 80s uh all 80s stuff i'm probably actually gonna have to split it into two because one is very much dx you know oriented and then the other is real analog and and uh more the rolling side of things that's 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 incredible stuff so uh, what, real quick, before we let you go, what time is your live stream, and how can we log in and watch it? Uh, it's going to be 8 o'clock Central, uh, right on my Facebook music page, which is just facebook.com slash Jim Daniker. Okay. Um, it's, it's, there's my personal one and then the, the my music one. It, so And both of them, you can find both of them, and they both have the, the link to it. But it's going to be on my music one. And then how do we find uh, your boss, Michael W. Smith, if we want to worship or we just need some nice music or some encouraging thoughts? To... His is uh, Michael W. Smith Official, all one word. Michael W. Smith Official. And it, awesome. Yeah, it's easy to know you're on the right one with him because he's got like, you know, two million followers or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm still working my way up. <laughs> oh, I, I think we all are, but I know I know Scott and I are doing this, uh, the synth talk, more for all, all of us fellow keyboard nerds out there. Give us something yeah. something to do and something to talk about, yep. and just really kind of build our community. And you know, uh, and we're talking about the Roland stuff, but you know, it's, it's just kind of even fun to talk about just music or history. And I see, uh, like for example, yeah. all the knuckleheads on the chat just gave out the name of that. Uh, Mark Harmon movie, Delib- The Deliberate Stranger. <laughs> just so everybody's like, oh, here that's it is. Great. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so I think that's you great. just called your wife a knucklehead. 
Oh yeah, but she's <laughs> she she's she's downstairs. So uh, hopefully yeah, hopefully crazy. hopefully she she logged out. Well, she knew what she was getting to twenty something years well, ago. Well, Ed, so. I got a couch here for you in Nashville if you, if you need a place to stay. Score, <laughs> Cole. We'll get some barbecue and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. There you go. All right. Well, you take care. Everybody, make sure you go to uh, Jim Daniker's Facebook, his official music page. Check that out. And then if you also want, please check out Michael W. Smith's uh, uh, dot com. And you can go ahead and uh, worship with them and just really listen to some beautiful music. And uh, definitely during this time, take advantage of all the creative outlets that are available to you. Yep. Yep. Awesome. All right, Jim. Well, thanks the- again, guys. Thanks for always good to talk to you. Always good to talk uh, to you. I can't wait till we uh, meet up once this is all over. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right. Take care, sir. Talk to you later. All right. Yep. All right, See bye. ya. Bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So that was good talking to Mr. Jim Daniker, uh, keyboardist. I'm not sure if he's the musical director, but probably. Uh, he's, uh, he's definitely keyboardist, session guy in Nashville uh, that works with uh, Michael W. Smith. You know, so uh, that's something that's great. Let's go back to the chat in here now that we're back. We got Jim on there, and I really enjoyed having Jim. Uh, we might try and do our international call in a little bit. N- Mark Watson might want to come on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, Mark Watson, our bro from Australia, says, I'm out for now, bro. I've got some pre- prep to do next time. Gift's got a kiss for me. Okay. And look, Scott left. He's, Scott's like, uh-uh. Anyway. I need coffee. Give he me need, a second. He needs I mean, co- here, I just need to drink some. He just needs to drink some coffee. All right, I'm going to go to the chat and see what everybody is saying. I love all the interaction with everybody. I hope everybody's doing well in here. Uh, let's see. Please, 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 please. Yeah, Marktronics really nailed it. I saw he, he said that, that uh, the average music listener doesn't listen. Is it analog or is it digital? Bottom line, is it good? Is it good music? I, I used to experience that a lot when I was on the road, and I was using, at the time, a Roland VK7 for organ. And I would see somebody come in, you know, just digging what we're doing and what I'm doing on the organ. And then as soon as they would see it was a clone, the v, VK7, they would make a, a, a grimace, kind of like, oh, it's that. It's like, dude, I saw you when you walked in. You were loving it, you know, until you had to, you, you were like that. It's, it sounds good. A VK7 still sounds good, and I ended up buying <coughs> a VK8 and a VK88. Uh, oh, I need some water real quick. Hold on. Yeah, but it's like, you know, with, with anything, you know, the conversation real quick, back to soft sense or, or the analog or digital, you know, vir- uh, virtual analog stuff or whatever. It's always the same thing. What inspires you? What's getting you to produce music? What's getting you to create? It really doesn't matter. And there is some amazing software out there. Don't don't get me wrong with that. But a lot of times I, I prefer to be able to just reach up and move sliders or, or turn a knob or do something like that than to go into the computer. So it just comes down to what works best for you. Yeah. But comparisons now are really really tough with you know the hardware the virtual analog stuff with the true analog stuff and and it's like i worry about the older analog stuff yep you know? and i see that cal williams put best band to use the dx7 is what did he put i, I lost it hold on, hold on. Is uh, something scritty scritty politi i don't know that i might have to look that one up uh evening to john simpson in the uk my wife said i heard you talking you need a door, and Tim H actually liked that that she, that she says I need a door. Yeah, my studio upstairs studios there isn't a door on here; it just goes right into the stairwell and uh, staircase, and it's just like a big echo. Oh, it, it's amazing because it's like being at Ed's place. You know, it, it's a long staircase to go all the way down, and she's way in the other room as she should be. <laughs> <laughs> and as she talks, I mean, she's just talking normal, and you can hear her clear as day up where Ed's sitting. And Ed can talk to her down there. It's it's amazing because it's probably fifty feet or better away. Yeah, and it's the way that 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 works. Yeah, it just throws the sound down there. So, yeah, I, I do need a door. Uh, okay, let's see here. Could you do a video about uh phantom analog vid- uh filter? Yes, we are about <clears throat> we are doing so much content with the synth talk, and then with dealers, and then with training and stuff. We are almost back to filming so with with official filming for the Roland product support channel so we, we're almost there and we are going to do that uh in there uh let's see cal said if you have time later can we possibly hear some arpeggios of the jupiter x and go over different types i i think that's cool maybe we can do yeah. some over that 
Uh, let's see. Oh, and Enzo said, I, I mentioned I want to see that too. Wait, what did you want to see, Enzo? Let's see. I'm mixing. Oh, Enzo wants to see analog filter. Okay, maybe we can show some of that. Uh, you want to, why don't you set up for some arpeggios on the Jupiter X, Scott? Uh, Tim H. Yeah, <laughs> Scott needs coffee. Ed needs a door. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. It actually is. Scott needs coffee. Ed needs a door. I had my one cup this morning because I like coffee too, but I only had one. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good question we can answer. Does the Jupiter have a built-in vocoder like the JDXI? And survey says, Scott. Yes. 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 It does have a does. mic input that can be either quarter inch or XLR. Did and that can way? either just be your, your voice through or it is connected to a vocoder. Yeah, so it does have a vocoder, and we are working on stuff, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I tried to point at Scott. I went the wrong way. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, anyway, so it does have a vocoder, and we'll get Scott to do that. I got to get Scott over his shyness of vocoding because, you know, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he, just, he needs to, like, let loose in the vocoding. Maybe we'll listen to some more slow jams. Slow jams. Slow then, jams. Yeah, slow jams. Magic 102, Quad Storm. You know, do that kind of stuff. Uh, that's cool. So yeah, we're gonna we're about Scott setting up uh, real quick for the arpeggio. That's cool. Uh, let me see, catch some more. Robin Spears with the uh, shout out to Robin for a the assist. Now it's coffee talk. It's coffee. We're not gonna talk <laughs> coffee. I'm not gonna talk coffee. Uh, it does. I see people. I I love seeing all you guys out there just kind of helping each other out. Uh, let's see. Man, everybody's talking about the vocoder. I love. Well, so, 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 blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Cal says he has a core Chronos too, but it's such a pain to change the ARP types trying to sell it so I can get the Jupiter X. Awesome. Shout out mm -hmm. to Korg. And, but yeah, the Jupiter X is really awesome. And Scott's just about ready. Let me just finish this part of the chat, Scott. Uh, what really kills inspiration is long boot up time, another plus for hardware synths. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've all been there if we work with uh, computer software. And we all use it, but there are times when my MacBook, something else is running, and then, like, my my logic and maybe my interface or whatever, something's not communicating, and I'm the only one that uses it, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> so, yeah, it could be a real big bummer. So that's what a nice thing like a Jupiter X or a Phantom that you can just really jump into there and just get, get inspired. And then later on, when I'm ready, I can go ahead and transfer those uh, via USB audio or MIDI and MIDI uh, over to the different DAWs, such as Logic or Ableton. Yeah, we can totally do that. Uh, what did you say? Let's see. Oh, really? I'm going to go check it out. Ed review, the, Ed's review, the reason I bought the JDXI. Score! Awesome. Yeah, JDXI. JDXI, when that one came out, Scott and I and uh, one of the other synth guys, we were in a room for eight hours just going over the JDXI. Not as a marketing thing, but just, right. just as keyboard dudes. We were just like... Hey, there was no manual at the time uh -uh. that we were going through it, none. Uh, we had to kind of figure it out basically by menu diving. And then the cool things that we found out is that it had the supernatural synth engine in it. And you could go all the way down to the partial level and change it, which is kind of unlikely for a really tiny, you know, under $500 keyboard. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing is that it was 128 note polyphony plus an analog part. So it's actually 129 if, if you look at it like that way. But it wasn't designed for the keyboard player. And Ed and I like fell in love with it and thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah, it was it was really cool. You know, so, it, well, it's still out. It's, st it's still out, oh, of course. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a great little board. So yeah, the JDXI is great. I was just actually, I had a friend reach out to me that his daughter... He wanted to get her a synthesizer, but he didn't want to spend a lot of money. And his daughter, I think she's like 12, wants to keep her, uh, get her into synthesizers because she's starting to get bored with pianos. And I was like, JDXI is fun, <laughs> you know, because I know for a year or so, Scott and I uh, were traveling with those in our bags, you know, just uh, not only because you have to demo them, but actually when I w would go to a store where I didn't have to demo the JDXI, I would actually uh, use it to produce in the room something to do. That's uh, one thing we don't talk about when we're on the road uh, to a lot of people is that there's a lot of time when you're not at a store there's you know, and you're just at a hotel by yourself. You're like, oh, la, la. <laughs> so <laughs> might as well be productive and learn about synthesizers and do some music. So that's uh, totally cool. All right, cool. Let me see here. I'm going to get Scott. I think he he's giving me that I'm ready, Ed, kind of look. Yeah. 
Oh, ready oh, enough. Um, hold on one second. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because he I, wanted to hear like different drum patterns and different arpeggiations and things. Is that whatever. Yeah, but hold on one second. I uh, let me adjust because Skype is doing some squirrely things, and I'm getting you squared. Hold on one second, Scott. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get you in the shot. Let me get me. See, everybody's seeing this stuff. We're get we're getting there. The thing is, I think, I don't know. Well, Scott and I will discuss this later. Whether we liked, uh, whether we liked, liked uh, Skype or versus or Skype. FaceTime. Yeah, we got to figure that out. I'm also that. keep in mind too. I I just thought about this. I'm coming out of the uh, switcher at 1080. So if anything's locking up or stuttering, that might be one reason. Everything's looking pretty good on on my side. I'm just I just. Uh, Trying to, you know, we're like I said, guys. We are always trying to improve this, and and we're getting there. We're getting there. Like I have it now, where I can look. It says Scott Berry. I can just bring it in just by pressing the key. All right, Scott. Please to you, sir. Have some fun. Uh, yeah. So basically, um, with this one, I'm just going to go over some different things, and you can see how much it changes. I, I like this uh, scene. It's also in the Jupiter Axe. It's called Pinwheels. But it, it shows the IR real well, but we'll go ahead and go through and I'll, I'll change some, some things as we go. So this is just it selected. I haven't done anything. So like with that, you can hear that it changes depending on how you play. So there's no rhythm going on or anything like that right now. So if I just come up to the rhythm section, I'll go ahead and stop this, and let's bring something in. So that's kick and hi-hat, kick and clap, loop, loop as. Let's see what some of these do. Another one. Let's see what else we got in here. No rhythm. The beat groove. another one this is just to give you an idea of how quick it is to move things around then i'm going to change the arpeggiator type here in a second so you can see it it doesn't take much and all of a sudden you're doing something completely different start messing with the arpeggiator type. So that's totally changed. It brings in this, this piano sound afterwards. This is a plucked one. Just some strange stuff. Why not? But that was just in that one 
uh, scene. So if we went into another scene and tried something else, um, we'd get all kinds of different things. Or let me show you, uh, I think it's in this one, this, the ballad. Uh, where'd you go? I saw you. There it is, big ballad, right? So this is um, big ballad. It shows you right there on the screen, SL1, meaning slider one. You should try it out. And in this one, it actually brings in a pad. So. If I bring this slider up. But if you turn on the R arpeggio and don't put the hold on, it's going to start every time it hears a note. So if I just play, you know, chord. Like different things that you can use and and just uh, to inspire. Hey, um, hey Scott, this this is sounding great. Uh, I saw one of the guys was asking how, and you don't have to do it because everybody's. Uh, Cal Williams was asking, does the uh, how long does the Jupiter X take to start up? And and I uh, one of the guys said about ten seconds. Robin said about five to seven. And one of the guys says it uh, depends how fast he can get to the keyboard. So so that's cool. So I think. Hey, it's, we can time it. You want to time it real quick? And yeah. See go, what happens? I'll go for it. Okay, we're gonna uh, time it. Here we go. Let's see. So off, and then I will hit on and boom. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. Oh. About seven seconds. Yeah. So seven seconds. Scott says seven seconds. And I know, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. Wolf Cry says, what does AI mean in the keyboard? I guess that's artificial intelligence. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and that's, uh, Scott, I guess that would be on the Jupiter, how how you're playing. It's reacting to how you're playing, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, like when I use the example in pinwheels, and I, I'll just do it really, really quick because I don't want to bore everybody. Um, five, where are you? I haven't. Yeah. Okay. So pinwheels, for for example, um, if if you just play a chord, you can hear the arpeggiator. It's very simple. But if I roll it. So it's going off of things like how fast you're playing, or uh, the velocity sensitivity, or how, or uh, yeah, stuff like that, that, that. That's triggering it to do different things. Same thing with a lot of the drum rhythm. If I'm starting to play faster, I might get you know bass drum and snare. If I play slow, I'll just get bass drum. Um, so that's where the intelligence is in that arpeggiator. Yes, yeah, so the, and then someone else was asking. Uh, can we see the classic 80s ARP styles like up and down, up, up, and you know, up, you know, like down, up, and down, up, up, or whatever, something like that? Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And, and, and while Scott's doing that, and in a second, I'll show you some of the Phantoms kind of doing some of that kind of stuff as well. Not not the AI, you know, not that, but uh, but it's definitely some ARP stuff. So like like in this screen, uh, this is just a saw stack, and I've turned on the arpeggiator, and I can show you it's um, this type. I'm hitting the wrong button. So the type here, you can see up, down, try, down, up, sixteenths, off. So yeah, all the common things that you would go after are going to be in here. Um, and, and of course a lot more, but yeah, you can do it. These are like the ensemble arpeggiation. So they'll bring in different things or turn on parts. Uh, but yeah, simple things like, you know, just up, 
uh, eighths and sixteenths. Turn that off. And then we could do, you know, uh, this poly thing. Poly. Those are ensembles. And it's like when I used it earlier, I just turned it on and just. I mean, that's your typical arpeggiation kind of sound. All righty. Hey, hold on. I'm there. I'm having a headphone. I'm having a hey. headphone issue. Hold on. <laughs> a bad cable. I can't hear you, but I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. I'll come back. I just play around. Do, do, do. All right. Ooh. I'm back. I had a bad headphone issue. You know, that's... Uh, there we go. I had just... It was just uh, all of a sudden my cable was going out, and luckily, luck oh, yeah. luckily my headphones that I'm wearing here, uh, you can actually switch out the cable. So my V Moda headphones, just a FYI, shout out to V Moda and our friends there. Shout so, out to Robin for reminding me of something that I showed him in a video, but forgot about. When you you want to make adjustments on controllers, but even in the iARP section. If you hold the shift button and then turn the knob, you get the screen up here. And if that's blown out, you can see it. And then you can actually make the adjustments here and see everything that's going on. You can also change the duration for the gate uh, and then the uh, shuffle and other parameters that are sitting in there and actually the range of the arpeggiation. But yeah, uh, that's what happens when you work on so many other keyboards. Shift, turn the knob, and it gets you into the screen. Thanks, Robin. All right, Robin with the assist right there. And let's see here. Let me go ahead and bring Scott's things out. Yeah, just we're working on this stuff. I'm trying to get it. Get, I'll bring it. Uh, look, Scott, I'll bring you on this part of the screen right there in the corner. Right, and, I'm trying to drink the last little bit of my coffee. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and show you a little bit on the Phantom. You know, I'll bring the Phantom in, and we'll get this going right here. Watch this, Scott. I can actually take you out. Hold on. This is pretty neat. I'm, we're working on stuff. Let me see. Is it that one? Oh, kind of. Yeah, look. I kind of got you out. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it took Scott out for a second so we could have a, <clears throat> a cup of coffee. So I'll show you a little bit of the Phantom here. We'll go through uh, some of the arpeggios in here. And I'll, I'll just bring in that sound in so I can hear. All right, so some of the arpeggios in here uh, that I like to use, uh, let's go, well, this one's just a crazy lead I just kind of uh, made up the other day. Just a fun lead I kind of kind of did in there. That's cool. Uh, let me see. So let's go ahead and just pick a sound. I'm going to go to a single tone sound, and I'll just probably use like a bass, like a nice bass in here. I'll go in, press enter in here, and then I'll go ahead, and I think I have some saved in the synth section, and there's more I have to go through. And I, I think to tend to favor this West End. <laughs> And the arpeggio button is right here. Here's the arpeggio button. So I can actually just turn it on and it automatically went to there. So it's actually on now. So I have that there, so that's cool. But I can also go inside. I can also go inside to here and maybe if I want to adjust a lot more in here. So right now, uh, they have different variations on that particular arpeggio. Within each one, within each arpeggio, there's a, there's a lot of different parameters available for you to edit. So on this one, and I'll put it on here just a little bit so you can see. And I might go ahead and adjust it. We're still in the same arpeggio, technically. So you guys can hear there's different ups and downs in the way they go ahead. Yeah, 
It is a tribute to West End Girls. Absolutely. Tim H. nailed that one, so that's cool. Uh, so you see, that's just the way the different variations. In a, so I might go ahead and put it on there. But then I can adjust the motif, how the musical motif that it does. So right now it's just going, it's just going up. Then we can go ahead and do it, do down. You can hear that. Up and down. And, you know, so you see random order. Uh, uh, this one's interesting. So, so a lot of different ones in there on the different arpeggios, depending on what you're trying to do here. Uh, and I'll show you a couple other ones. And there's so many. Uh, I can also be adjusted by the keyboard velocity that we choose, the octave range. So, so I'll go ahead and put it back on up, for example. And I, I kind of favor that. I'll put it on this one kind of like that, that triplet. And then maybe we'll go ahead and have some fun. Adjust that octave range. You hear it jumping? Do it two octaves. And this is just one. This is just one of the arpeggio styles in here. And there's quite a bit more in here that we can actually do. Uh, there's no way I can go through all of them. But let's go through a couple more just for fun. And we're always thinking about, you know, you know this basic kind of arpeggio. But there's a lot more. So if I were to go out of here and let's choose an electric piano and the arpeggio is off. And I can choose that, but I can go further into the arpeggio and we can have some fun right in here into there's a there's a bunch of them. Uh, let's see. Let's see what this one, this rhythmic uh, one. So. OK, cool. So we can have that going. Uh, let me go ahead and answer this question. Tim H has asked, is there an option to just activate the ARP? Oops, this just moved. Is there an action uh, option to activate the ARP instead of showing the ARP configuration screen on the Phantom? Pressing Shift plus ARP is not convenient live. Okay, so I guess what you're uh, saying, Tim, is like, I just want to play like I'm playing. Well, right now, I, I just turned it on and it popped up the screen. And, you know, probably, prob I guess probably what it would, would have is I'd probably have it. Oh, oh, here, duh, here's the way, here's how I would turn it on. Here's a couple ways I can turn it on. Just had to think. Let me back up. All right, so I don't want this to come on the screen. Let's just pretend I, I already chose this one, and in a live situation, I want it to come on. Well, one way I would do it is, and there's a couple ways I'm going to show you. One way is, say I have my, my um, scene open, and there's an art button right here to turn it on and off right there. But, you know, but I'm playing, so that might be difficult. Another way would be to go ahead and assign it either to a pedal or one of the S1s and S2 buttons. So the way I would do that, let me go ahead and take this off the screen. The way I would go do that is I would do it to the scene, have it in the scene, hold down shift, and let's hit S1 or S2, whichever you prefer. I'll hit S2 in this example. And I'll... It automatically goes to the assigning section. I would pop it right open, and then uh, I would scroll and find where it says the ARP on and off right there. So here we go. I think it's in here. Hopefully, hopefully. Let me see. And we should be able to turn it on and off that way. And let's see. There's, there's hold, sustenuto, resonance, attack, decay. 
Uh, after touch, bend up. Oh wait, 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 wait. Where's where are you, Scott? Am I missing it? Let me see here. Well, it, it's possible. I mean, it may not be assignable to the switches, and the reason why is because the art button is right there. Let me let me go ahead and yeah, let me see if it's. I'm gonna move real quick. I'll see right here. I'm going to move my sustain pedal and see if I can put it to the control switch. So on the pedal, if I hold down shift and I hit it, it comes up so I can adjust the pedal. And right now I have it set on that particular control one to scene up. And let's see here. There it is right there. So it's designed to be put in the, in the pedal on that one. So I, if I press right, I could write it actually into the scene. So now... So it's actually on in the scene. Oh, let me see. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, I had it. Did I do it right? Let me see. They have the ARP switch selected for the tone that you want, or the zone oh. that you want in the scene. Oh, I didn't have it on already. Okay. Okay. So right now, I have it on. Let me move this. It's actually on in here, but since we have it programmed in, into the foot pedal, it's on there as that's where it's going to design is dest, uh, destined to go but I'm going to I'm not touching this I'm not touching this but I'm hitting my pedal and it just powered it on turn it on and off with the pedal I just turned it off with the pedal there it is it's already predetermined to turn on in part one turn on my pedal there we go so that would be the that would be the way uh to go ahead and put that in there, Tom. I mean, so excuse, I'm sorry, Tim. That would be the way to go ahead and put that there. So I would probably write it to the scene, and then I would have one of the three controller pedals that we have available. I would have I have it have it in a pedal there. Uh, Robin says, Ed, I'm still trying to get through all the art possibilities of my Jupiter eight from eight years ago. Give me another uh, decade to go through the art possibilities of the Phantom and the J JPX. Uh, absolutely, there's there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Uh, let's see. The Jupiter fan put, wish you could import, uh, MIDI file type zero patterns as arpeggio to the Jupiter X as you can on the JP 50 and the 80. And we are working on things. There are things it, it, we worked on. The Jupiter X, I mean, with the, uh, intelligent arpeggiation or arpeggio, it's different than what's sitting in the Phantom. The Phantom's arpeggio is a lot more like what the 50 and the 80 would be. But, yeah, we're always working on stuff, like I was saying. I'll let you finish. Sorry oh, that. yeah, put it on your front camera. <laughs> so, yeah, we are working oh. we are working on stuff right there. So that, uh, you know, we never know. You know, the Phantom is a growing platform, and there's a bunch of stuff for it. And as soon as we can share what's being worked on, we will share everything for you, for you and that's going to give us even more to talk about. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so just hold tight on, on there. We're going to see what we can work out because, you know, you got to remember we got, if we go back into the Phantoms history, the Phantom X came out, it was a 16 track sequencer. Uh, and it, and we, an update came out where it gave you 16 mini tracks, but then you were able to add on eight audio tracks. So that was an update that came. So there's always updates that come, so that we're going to make stuff even tighter and even even better. So just hold tight on that. Uh, stuff is coming sooner than you think, so that's awesome. Uh, let's see. Liam Wick says, can I assign a knob slider for reverb and, let's say, for chorus for all sounds? I guess that would be a TFX kind of assignment, right, Scott? I'll switch, yeah. over, yeah. I'll switch over so we can see that. Let me see if I have this working. Do, 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 do. Hold on, I'm trying to use my switch here. Studio mode, great. Okay, cool. So over there, over here. So yeah, if I wanted to have that going, I would go ahead and let's see. Well, let me let me review again. What was just remind me, Scott? Is can you assign a knob slider for oh, reverb? Yeah. Okay. Total uh, slider for the the chorus amount for all sounds. That would be. I'm trying to think. Well, I guess First, I'd probably go into the effects. Yeah. Uh, Hmm. So we well, I guess you know, I guess it would be where you would do, you would do it. I don't know if it would be global. I think you would have to do it where it's within the scene, you know. But I see what he's thinking there. You know, I wonder here. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and step on the pedal. 
I wonder if we could do it to a pedal. Instead of being a damper pedal, we use like a volume expression pedal for that. So I'll hold down shift and let's see what we come up with right here. That could be kind of a cool thing in there. Uh, hold on one second. All right, cool. So I just opened this up and I as uh, assignment one. Let's take a look at what we can have in here. So we can have the vocal increment decrement in here. Uh, well, there's this, there is a chorus, so we can assign one to the chorus there. And but th I believe these assignments are for uh, for individual. yeah for indiv for individual scenes, individual scenes, because that's the thing. And oh, he said chorus, I think, and reverb, if I remember. Is that what he said? Let me take a look. Look, look, look. Yeah, so he said for for reverb and let's say chorus for all sounds. Uh, in that one, I guess I guess you could, you could, you would just assign the external. I'm I'm sorry, you would assign like maybe a volume switch, uh, right there, and you just assign that there. But I think, and we're just I'm just doing a quick check of stuff like that because I see those there. Uh, I would probably go like Scott was about to say, go into the menu. Go into the menu right there and then go into the effects edit. And then I would probably look uh, internal and check out. Let's see, we got the outputs there. It would be in the internal right here in the look, master sure, effects. Master effects, yeah, yeah. And see what you can do there. So in master effects right here, we have a master compression, master EQ. But in each of these, it does route to the chorus reverb right there. So I bet you you could probably turn it on in there, and that would be for the whole keyboard. Uh, let's take another look in there. Uh, I'm going to take a look, Scott, and see in the system if there's anything that we can do specifically for that, like if we do something in the sound section for that. Uh, let me see. I see local output gain, all that kind of stuff. But... I think you would. Oh, wait a minute. Liam, Liam came up and he says, my problem. I want to use chorus for example, an electric piano and put it on an assignment knob, uh, number one. And when I want reverb two, I want it on number two. Always. I need to activate knob two for channel one. I, I think you're on the right path Ed, because you, you could assign those knobs to specific, uh, control change numbers and then if those cool with what the effects are doing yeah. what did you find what are well, you looking at well, it's hard for me to see in the screen oh i'm sorry i'm sorry so what i was what i was thinking scott was that that we can kind of come into here and it says you know for the control the control source select system control source uh we could probably do go ahead and have different well first off you got to tell it whether it's system or it's seen. That's the first thing. And for those of you guys that want to go ahead and have those control sources uh, for for the overall keyboard, you would set it. If you wanted to have it where it changes according to which scene you're in, you would put it to scene. And this is a global thing, so you have to decide one way or the other, right there. Uh, I tend to use scene, but from what your guys are saying, we would probably go here. And then you can decide within those different system control sources uh, what you want to put in there. And so probably for some of you, I see that we were talking about, you know, we want to have chorus and reverb. And I believe those were near the bottom. And I would probably use an expression pedal. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, please, because, you know, the effects thing, we, we're always learning that. So I'd probably go ahead and have a reverb, one pedal for reverb. And let me put this one pedal for well, reverb. He's, he's talking about assigning it to a knob. So the knobs are assignable and so are the sliders in, in a different mode. So I think either way would work. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure on that one. Yeah. You would just have to kind of, uh, dec you, you, let me, let me switch. You have to make, you have to make decisions on what, how you want it to work. You know what I mean? So I know myself, I like to have everything per scene because I might have a completely different setup depending on the scene or what kind of sound or playing yep. situation. And so that's kind of works better for me. But if you always want to have reverb, 
control of reverb and and uh, say chorus, I I might I might suggest from a live player standpoint standpoint maybe have those assigned in the controller in the control pedal so you can go ahead and adjust them live because chances are uh, uh, you're probably going to adjust you might you might adjust the reverb and the chorus a lot maybe depending on your situation but if you if you're not adjusting it a lot i would probably just write it into this into the specific tone so that way that tone will be the correct reverb and chorus within the scene whenever you use it you know maybe maybe that's the ticket you know write write that write those effects into the tone what do you think scott and then when you call yeah. up that tone in whatever scene you use it's at those right levels but yeah you could i think you i would probably do it in inside a pedal myself you know but that's just that's just me there's not really you know it's whatever works uh for you honestly straight up absolutely yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Let me just go ahead and put Scott back over here. And awesome. All right. Cool. So let's go back in here. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to catch up with everybody. Let's see. Uh, Diplomat Pooja says he thinks he uses key trigger to engage the app. Okay. Okay, Tim. Glad we worked that out. Uh, and Scott got that. Hello, Johnny Slash. Let's see. Uh, Jason Smith said, is it impossible to export a scene, including toad modifications? To import at this time. Yeah, that's not possible. Um, okay. Anyway, so, so just, <laughs> we are always working on stuff. So it's something j just so you know, Jason, it's something that we requested. Um, and who knows, we may see it in an update, um, in the near future. Yeah, just hold tight. A lot of things are coming. A lot of things are coming. And like I said, like uh, when soon as Scott and I get the okay, whoa, we're going to share everything with you. So that's something to uh, definitely want to know for you guys. Uh, oh, Tim, he's, he's not currently, but we hope I become available with the next OS. Yeah, it becomes available. Just hold on. Things are coming. And like I said, as soon as, and as, soon as we can share, we will share and have some fun. Uh, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Liam. And I see Michael Ballard. He says, uh, and I love all this. He says, currently the Phantom only allows a single slider knob per selected zone uh, while assignment one is pressed. Uh, would Roland consider expanding this number to 8 to 16 assigner row sliders, uh, excitable sliders knobs per zone? Let me see. Would Roland consider expanding this number to 8 or 16 assignable sliders per zone? So let me... Yeah, so I was going to say, if you go over to the, the slider section going right uh, now, Phantom, and hit assignable and then hit shift and move one of those sliders, I think that will show you what he's talking about. Yeah, so, okay, hold on, let me just bring this up. So he's saying 16 sliders per zone? Is that what is, that's what we're being said? I, I think what he's asking, yeah, it, is to see if um, – uh, you can assign different things for each slider. That, that's why I wanted to double check this. If you've selected the assignable, hit shift and hit one of the sliders, what does each slider show up as? Does it give oh. you an option to have something different? Okay, so uh, let's go over here. Shift, holding down the shift. Oh, I'm in pan level, which for those of you guys that don't know, if you're in the pan level and you, and you just move it, it just does it, right? But if you hold down shift, it pops open a mixer. Just FYI, just FYI. So that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna hit the assignable now, and I'm gonna hold down Shift and give it a give it a wiggle. Hey, give it a wiggle, and we can see currently on this assignment, these I don't have anything assigned to them. So it looks like they're open. You know, you still there, Scott? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So it looks like they're open there. And if we did, if, if we did earlier, like when we were over here in the system, if we had control source set to scene, they'll change according to what I have assigned there. So, so, okay. So assignment one, here we go. We see all the different sliders. That's cool. That's cool. And, and each one can be a different CC command, correct? Yeah. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and try. The answer, the tentative answer, but I want to show you guys, and we'll just make absolutely sure. And we're just starting with a, we're just using just a random thing. So I'll go ahead and put 
I'm not even c c care about what's in the assignment right now. We're just kind of putting random stuff. And where am I? Okay, cool. Yeah, we're just kind of putting random things in here. And yeah, I think it, I think it can be. Totally can be. It looks like it looks like it is. And this is what we do a lot of times. We're just trying to figure out stuff just like you guys. But I love that we're able to do this here. So yeah, we can have different assignments. Let me take off that bottom part of the keyboard. See if you can select. See if you can select chorus or or reverb in there. Oh, good qu good call. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it here. So let's see. So I'm on assignment one. I think those were near the bottom. Here is the chorus. It's boom. And then in hold shift, give it a wiggle on number two. And let's go inside slider number two. And oh, what is this? Reverb. Let me, make, let me make sure I did it right. So assignment two is reverb. Assignment one. Oh, I missed the wrong one. Here we go. My bad. Here we go. All right. Chorus. So there we go. So, yeah, you can have a slider on chorus and one on reverb. So here, here's here's the good thing is that you have a minimum amount and a maximum amount. So let's say you want to assign slider one to chorus, but you don't want it to totally kill it. You can do a minimum. Um, or you don't want it to be full-blown by just throwing that slider up. So just keep that in mind. Um, I think Michael is saying... Uh, uh, they're all assignable, but it, it's only per zone. Um, let's see, put a couple layers in there and let's see if we can get them to affect more because the, it comes down to the routing. It comes down to the whole routing of everything. Um, mm -hmm. it, you could have everything set up so it's all going to a, a chorus or a chorus amount or something like that. And then you might have certain parts that you want to have it ignore that slider movement. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the MIDI filter page, so it really depends on on routing and sitting down. But it's looking like it could be more possible of what you're trying to do. And, and um, let me show them that page, Scott. What you, the exact page? So we make sure we know. Uh, hold on. All right, cool. So the page Scott is talking about. Let me transition out of there. Boom. Okay. So say we went ahead and we assigned those different slider assignments. But I don't, and, and I think on this they're going to affect everything, but we can go into here and shift. I can go into uh, shift into the zone select, and let me make it so you can see exactly what I did. Shift zone select, so I actually get into the screen, and then I can go ahead and I would go down here, <clears throat> go down here, and we can go in. And we can adjust. So there's the pedal controllers. We can say, I want which pedal controller to react to which zone for one. Uh, and then uh, bend controller. We can tell which controllers react to which zone. And then here we get into what Scott is talking about here. S1, S2, and then assignment knobs. There we go. And there should be one more. Assignment sliders. So... So yeah, I think I think yes, you can do it, Scott. I believe you can. It's just a little bit of um, a little bit a little bit of planning on your, on the the keyboard player's part, and probably a little bit of trial and error. But again, yeah. once you've got it set up and you you write it into the scene, that's always there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so so I just haven't had a need to do this, but you know everybody has different needs and stuff. So that tells me that we can actually have the and, and don't forget we have two rows of sliders in there in uh, assignable sliders in here and i think i i think i need to get that uh yeah i mean one, one of the things that, that i i would do quite a bit would be i would take the eighth slider because it's the closest to the screen and easiest to find right there uh, yeah and i would assign that to expression right mm. so it could do volume up and down you know uh, and then, depending on the layer that I've got built, I may decide that I've got strings and a piano and a couple other pad sounds. And when I pull that slider down, I've told everything but the piano. 
uh, to listen to the expression. So I've told the piano zone, ignore expression. That way, when I pull that one slider down, I have my strings, my horns, my pads, all coming down at the same time with one slider, but okay. my piano sound remains. All right, time out. Let's see. So Scott, what Scott was saying is he would, if he, he would probably put that's that expression right here in this slider because it's easy for him. Either eight or number one, something that's easier easy for you as you're playing to find real fast. So let's just use Scott's example number eight. But Scott doesn't want this to affect all of the zones. Okay, so, and I think just as a quick review, shift, go into the zone select, and then, you know, go all the way down until we get into the assignable slider section. So right now, they just made a little, little cute little, little design, but maybe, maybe I'll come into here. Where am I? Okay, maybe I'll come in and I'll say, you know what, this is this scene. I don't want, I want that slider to affect maybe not number one. No, no, no. I want that. Right. I want yeah. that on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. I say, yeah, let's say that's the B piano. Yeah. So you would want the slider. You don't want uh, zone number one to see that slider at all. And, and you know, and, and you know what, just so to keep, keep my, so just, just as a quick reminder. So the zones are this way, one through eight. And there's actually, you know, nine through 16 okay so go back to the top so i would probably go in and just unselect everything myself just so it's like okay i got a clean slate uh do i want that slider that that scott's talking about which was number eight do i want that to affect let's say a v piano mm, maybe maybe not or maybe i want it to go ahead and affect maybe my string section maybe my you know another section and and maybe a voice so I might go ahead and have this guy only affect, let me go down shift, let me go ahead and assign it, as Scott is saying. Uh, what did you say to do it? Maybe volume? Yeah, maybe volume. No, no, expression. Set it up for expression. There we go, expression. So, once again, that was uh, in the scene edit. Here we go back into the sliders. Not sliders, where am I at? The knobs. Oh, There we go. Okay. So I'm in a assign this slider. So that this particular one will only expression will only affect will only affect these guys. So just as FYI, that could be cool. So okay, so exper yeah, experiment with that and and you know, we're always wanting we don't know everything. I'm gonna just say that right away. Okay. A lot of trial and error. A lot of trial and error, just like all, all of us bros out there. We're figuring stuff out with you. And we're just kind of having fun with this. Uh kind of kind of cool. All right. Uh let's see. Look, Scott, both of us have the keyboards up. All right, let me go back to some of the questions real quick. Just kind of see. See in here. Okay, Scott's back up being a silly. All right. Uh yeah. This man, this one y'all got to get into knobs and sliders. That's a that should be a we could do a whole thing whole on that. episode on yeah. that. Yeah, we, you know what? That would maybe let us work on that. That could be like okay, why like why would I use this knob? Why would I use this slider? And then maybe that could be something fun we could, we can work on. And then uh, uh, who knows? Maybe in the future we can share backups and you guys can uh, take and take the examples. You know, we'll see what happens. That could be cool. Uh, let me see here. Awesome, uh, Michael. Yeah, good he job. Said, uh, zone edit, slider assignment, filter looks like exactly what I'm looking for. Thanks. Good, good. More than welcome. NRC, our bro at ZT Audio. Just check out his videos, and, and that's Alan. Alan does a great job with that stuff. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. And I think that's – was Michael the last one? Okay, well, wait. I'm lost in the chat. Lost in the chat. Help. <laughs> All right, I think that's the last one on that one. So yeah, it's, so let's see. Do we? I know we're getting missing everything. I think I I probably owe Enzo. I got to do something for Enzo on the filter. Enzo wanted to hear some some an, the analog filter. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me think. Let me think right now because I'm trying to think right now, Enzo. How do I show it on here? And let me see. We'll use a regular synth sound, Scott. What do you think? We'll just let me go. Yeah. Ahead. Oh wait, be careful because this one. 
This one can definitely pierce some ears. Yes, that's th that's another thing. If you're listening in headphones, I got to be careful because we can actually hurt you. So hold on one sec. Let me tr let me transition over to here, and we'll go over right there. I'm just gonna go to a single tone. So I got a blank space in here, and we should probably use what like a Jupiter S kind of kind of sound, Scott. And yeah, and I'd probably stay in the lower region of the keyboard just in case. <laughs> you don't want you don't want that, Scott. All right, cool. All right. Okay, let me go ahead and find. I don't think I have anything. Oh, I got I got my favorite poly saws. For those of you that know me, this is. This is my money sound. I just love that. I just love that sound. I just love that sound. Okay. Anyway, so how should, which I'm trying. Okay, let me go back over here, and let's pick probably a synth pad, and let me see what I have. Anything rated? I haven't really rated. Oh, that has something in it, so we don't want to use that one. <laughs> we don't have something in it. Let me go back. Look for like a Jupiter Strings or Juno Strings or something like that, Mickey. Scott, how could I search that? I don't know. I could hit the search button, everybody. If you haven't updated to the latest operating system, is which is 1.51, I think. Uh, 1.51. So I hit uh, JP. That's cool. There we go. We got a lot of JP8, JP whatever. And... Let's see. What do we think about that? That might be a good one. Kind of get us going. Okay, I'm going to choose choose this one, and then we're going to go ahead and route it to the analog uh, filter. And I might have to, I might have to kind of change because my main outputs are going out through main outs. I might have to go ahead and uh, unplug and go to the analog filter out. What do you think, Scott? I might have to do that. Yeah, if you want to demonstrate the, how mm. it passes through just that analog out, yeah. Yep. If not, I mean, you can still show it as you're set up right now. It just goes out the mains. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that right here. If I wanted to go into there, Scott, what would I do? I'd probably go into menu. I'd probably mm -hmm. go into tone effects, uh, tone edit. I'm sorry, tone edit. Great. Oops, not tone edit. I'm sorry. No, the easiest uh, way to do it is I think you have a button there on the left side of the screen. Oh, it's yeah. an analog filter. Duh, thank you. <laughs> analog filter right there. <laughs> and so we got it right there. Oh, okay. And then we have the analog filter right here. And we can, we can adjust what we have going. We have some overdrive in there. Let's take a look. We're going to go back there. We have our voltage controlled. All that stuff right there. And then we also have where we want it to go to. It's going to go to uh, analog filter return to main if we want it to. All right. So let's go ahead and have some fun with this and get this kind of going. It is a stereo filter. Just so you know, it is a stereo filter. Yep. And I think that will be reflected soon in an update. That will be actually reflected in there. So... Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and adjust this analog filter. And Enzo, go ahead. You better be in here, Enzo. Maybe I should have waited till Enzo. Oh, wait. wait. There's Enzo's there. Enzo's there. Okay, good. Okay. I would be kind of sad. I would be sad if we did this for Enzo and he's not there. I'd be like, really, bro? No, it's all good. Enzo's there. I see him. So good. Uh, all right. Let me go back into here. I don't think I need... Uh, I'm not going to put the keys this way. I'll put the keys this way. You don't really need to see them. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, Enzo's like, I'm here. Stop yelling. All right, so let's kind of have some fun. We have it. Oh, and one thing, Scott, I don't know if everybody notices this, is that when you have the analog filter on, let me get out, mm -hmm. of, here. Let me get out of here. It goes okay. red. So look, right there, it's blue for the digital, but when I actually go in to the analog now it's red just a little visual representation that's kind of a cool like oh little little nugget there all right it's good. a good visual to go oh yeah that's analog yeah right there. so that's kind of cool all right so let's go inside the analog filter and 
And we'll go ahead and twist the knob in here for you guys. Get that going. And keep in mind, this is YouTube. It is compressed. Uh, this will sound much better if you go do it live. So we'll go ahead and I got to watch the cutoff and resonance. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Did you say something, Scott? I said, ow. Ow. Adjust the resonance. Oh, if look at that. Listen to that. If you have good speakers on, or good headphones, especially a speaker with a sub. Is there another sound there, or is it just one one tone? That's just one tone. That's <laughs> just one. Oh, you! I hope you guys have good good headphones. It still is still filtering. You can still hear it on the bottom of the really low end on that cutoff. Sounds like a sounds like a truck backing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like right, right here. I'm gonna hit the brown note. Everybody ready? No, I'm just joking. Okay, stop it, Ed. All right. So let's go ahead and go to another one. That's kind of fun. So <laughs> Marktronics his eight inch JBLs. Awesome. So let's use another one, another low pass. And I'm just messing with the cutoff and the resonance right here and reaching over and just kind of adjusting. And I'm trying to be really watchful of there. Look at that. It's just ringing out. Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to watch. Try not to blow anybody's speakers out. Self oscillating. Hey Scott, answer ZT's question. I'm I'm like uh, Let it ring. Okay. Here, uh, Alan, ZT, as far as the key beds go, like the Phantom Six and the Jupiter X. They're the same key bed with the same aftertouch. Um, so it, it is identical. Uh, so if it's having a response issue, my guess would be a uh, possible software update. Um, I'd have to dig into it. Uh, I know Ed's got a Phantom 7 there. I've got one here too. I'll have to compare the two of them and see what we can find out. And if there is something, we'll definitely um, you know, yep. see something, say something. See something? Stop it! Uh, <laughs> remind me, remind me what you just said later, Scott, because I'm I was thinking something else. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let us uh, like Marktronics got the sub on. Yeah. And then uh, let's see. Let's go. I'm trying to read Enzo. How would I now? En Enzo says, "How would I route that to another keyboard? I have plugged into the input." That's an interesting question. So uh, and and I still have it up. And it, uh, let's see. Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, let's it, let's yeah, take. You'd have to look at the effects screen yep. and do the audio in and see how you would route that. Yep. So hold on, we're about to check that. So, but uh, you know, I I don't even. I, I, no, uh, hold on. I'm a, I'm switching here, Scott. I don't even know. You know, ugh. I don't even know if I'd want another one to do that. I'd be like, hey, that's what my Phantom does. <laughs> you can. You can do your own stuff. Stop copying me. No, anyway, let's let's let me see if I can figure it out because I never even thought that. I don't even know if the Phantom does that or if it would offer that. You know, uh, uh, pretty much give a, a analog filter to an external, but it's worth a shot. You know, let's give it a shot and see right there, and we'll do it. Let's let me see. So as Scott was saying, we're gonna go in through. Let me exit out of here. We're gonna go into uh, the. Probably the go back real quick. I'm sorry. Go go back real quick to the uh, analog filter page. What is the routing that it shows on there, uh, where the signal's coming in and everything else, or is it routed per zone? Are you see? Uh, What's well, probably routed per zone on here? Zone one. 
Okay. Uh, I, I see. I see that I can put the different zones in there, but if I go to the master effects back here, uh, to the chorus and reverb, and I'll go back one more. Oh, excuse me. Chorus and reverb is the the um, the IFX. Got that. I'll go back one more zone effects. Oh wait, I missed it. Zone effects right there. And that's where it kind of stops in the zone effects. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go back into the master effects. Oh, not master effects. Menu. Uh, I'm going to go into. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Edit uh, effects. Edit. I'm sorry. Right there. All right. Here's probably where we're, we're going to look at Enzo. Uh, I would probably look at the audio in. Right, Scott. Probably audio in first off, and then I have to determine where I'm going. This is where where we would decide what we're bringing in. Okay. And and it's routing. Where where is it going through? Absolutely. So so what we have here is first off we can design line or we can do the mic and if, whether it's going to be a phantom power and and the and if we want to and then we got to turn it on. Uh, but it looks like and let me turn off the volume so I can put my hand down. Uh, it looks like we have low cut available to us, EQ, noise suppression, vocoder if we're using a mic uh, or or probably maybe like a drum like Gatabus was doing. We could try, I'll, I'll probably try that at some point. I got to watch that video, and then reverb, and then we have, uh, we can decide. Uh, oh, am I? As, as there it is. That it? Analog? Is that the analog? Analog filter? Let me just take a look. Analog filter out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look. So probably, all right, Enzo. Let's see here. Probably I would go into. The line, uh, oh, it's probably there. Got him. So line, so inputs one and two, and I would turn it on if I had something going through here, and then I can let it pass through all this stuff. But then I would tell it to go, probably to there, right, Scott? Probably to the a analog filter effects, probably right there. An analog input, output assign. So that would be the analog uh, filter out right there. Right. And so th that should work. That I mean, that, that looked right. Yeah. So that should work. But then would it affect? I'm trying to think if I have anything close by. I think that might work. Give that a shot. Give that a shot, Enzo. And, and maybe we could do that. I could grab a boutique on another a, brut a boutique synthesizer and try that at some point. You know, I just I'm just not set up for that. And if you're crazy enough to try a microphone, be really careful of your volume. And if you got headphones on, because yeah, yeah, you could pierce yourself real quick. Yup, you you only do it once. So <laughs> what? 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 So uh, that's cool. Oh, hold on, let me see here. All right, cool. I think that might be it. I think that might be it, Scott. If Enzo or anybody else wanted to route something else else through there, they could totally do it that way. What do you? What do you think? Sounds right to me. I'd give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, so, sometimes it's like, you know, situations will cause something, not just I want to do it. How do I get this to work? That will get you to learn the keyboard or go deeper or find something you didn't even know it existed. Yeah. Like uh, uh, I've ran uh, the uh, iPad audio um, through the keyboard, through the, the inputs, um, just because I don't have another mixer. When I'm playing live, so I've been able to route that through a keyboard and run it through, and then add some effects to it, uh, you know, a chorus or a delay or something like that. Yeah. So Enzo, Enzo, give it a try, Enzo, but be careful. Okay. Just watch your volume. Don't go hog wild and stuff like that, because uh, I don't want you to hurt your ears or blow up your speakers. So just uh, give it a shot and let us and report back to us, because I'm kind of interested and probably. I, I could probably do it here, Scott. Probably with one of the uh, one of the boutiques. Yeah, let's just kind of try it. I just I just haven't. I wasn't ready for that, but Enzo was like, ah, okay. Uh, let's see, Marktronics. You could, with, you could do it with anything that you can connect into it. So oh even yeah. If you had like a little uh, uh, recorder or something that had music on it or your phone, you could probably route it through and see if it affects it. But of course, the iPhone makes it harder. Cause yes. Thank you. So anyway, oh no, Marktronics. He said, if I had a Jupiter X, I could test this on my F8. Hold it's on, coming. it's you coming. Know it's coming. It will be there sooner than you know it. 
Yeah. Chill out. <laughs> Somebody hug him as long as you practice social. <laughs> Somebody, everybody send Mark Tronix a social distance hug. So virtual hug. So, so yeah, it's coming. Your Jupiter X is coming. And just for those of you that uh, are new here, we're just kind of having some fun. Oh, uh, let's see. Sob Clubber asks, uh, hey, Sob Clubber, if you're still on here. He asks, can the Phantom do side chain compression like other workstations? And, and I, I haven't even tried that. You know, we have one of the guys at Roland um, that's in the East Coast. Won't mention his name, but, uh, he's, you know, out in New York. You know who I'm talking about, Scott. He's all oh, about yeah. he's all about the side chain. I should bring he, I should bring I should bring he him. He wanted in. to come on. We should get him on here because he's very very nerdy. Yeah, uh, like like a professor type thing. But he's got so much information on that end. Yeah, he's a nerd too. So, but he's funny. He even does a little dance. He's just like when he gets excited. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to think on how we would do that side side chain compression. What are your thoughts, Scott, on that one, or should or I'd should we take a look at the effects? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the effects. All right, let me go ahead and switch. If we need to, we might need to we might need to table this and kind of just see. Uh, so hold on, let me see if we can do this. All right, cool. All right, let me switch over and let's take a look. Once again, you're seeing we're switching to the effects a lot. So uh, the effects screens that really helps us kind of figure stuff out. Uh, side chain, uh, I would probably do it. To the effects edit right through here and i would probably do what we were talking about maybe internal effects on that one scott yeah i'm trying to figure out what would be the the best way to do this and, um, yeah and let me take a look let's take a look at the master effects while we're here and see what we have available just over here and i'll try and go through here and we'll just take a peek because there might already be an effect kind of built into there well we got the compressor right there let me just take let me take take a well hold on that's number 33 we'll take a look got the good old bit crusher would a lo-fi compressor be kind of like that a side chain but it, it would probably say side chain Let's see if it was something built in like that. I mean, a side chain is basically pulling from something else or or, or a pattern yeah. to push and pull or, or duck. And, uh, yeah. We get a mid-side compressor. And it's not something – it's an effect that I like, but it's never, it's something I just don't use. So, um, yeah, it's trying to figure out the best way to do it. Well, I was uh, would be a perfect Peter thing, though. Perfect Peter thing. So we we might we might go ahead. Well, <laughs> South Clubber is here. He's like, good, show me. <laughs> so he's there. Uh, let me take a look at. I'm just trying to think how to bring it in, in here. Uh, internal. So will we go. Would that be something? Would that be something we triggered via going through another output? Like you know what I'm saying? Because yep. so. So we would trigger like maybe I'm just trying to think, will we go into like internal through here, but then have it route out into a one of the other sub outputs? Is that one? You mean the IFX? Yeah. Well, maybe let's take a look at the IFX and then what we have in there. Just take a look at the edit and we have the different throughs and we have a lot of the same in there. Hey, hey, send a text to the professor while I look, and see if he wants to come on real quick. Well, at least at least to do. I, I'll I'll hit him up afterwards. Oh, okay. I, I I would say yeah. We'll see if we can get him on either tomorrow or uh, next week. Because I see this mid side compressor, and you know we can go in so that to edit that. And I might, so be clever. We might have to work on this one because I'm trying to figure out how we how we would do it in here. And then would, would we go ahead and route maybe to an uh, output assign and stuff? I uh, it, so it's very possible that it's there, but I just I just don't use that effect very often for what I'm trying <laughs> to do. Uh, so be clever. If you're there, tell me. Just give give us if you can, please. Give us an example of how you want to use it. Uh, 
you know, and that just kind of helps, you know, so that way we can kind of re recreate, try and recreate what you're trying to do. Like are you using it for a bass sound or via the drums or what's what's going on? Just give me an example of what you're trying to do with it there. And that'll help us because I think we might go ahead and table this so we can kind of dig into it a little bit more, you know, and kind of get that a little bit better. I want to make sure we do it right on here because I, I really don't use um, sidechain that often. What about you, Scott? Nope, it's just not something that. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, let's let us know. I know the effect, but it's not stuff that I'm I'm usually doing. You know. Yeah, yeah. So that's let us know what you're trying to do. Uh, so we can we put it in the in the chat real quick, so we can look at it and review, and then we can kind of see on there. All right. So I'm a, here, Scott. Put up your camera. I'm gonna bring you back into the mix. What? Okay, there you go. Let me work on this transition stuff over here. Oh, look, somebody's calling. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Always busy. Anyway, all right. So I think we're at a point in the show. We've gone, you know, two hours. It's a good show so far. Going through a lot of things. We learned a little bit about the knobs and the sliders. Got that going. Uh, shout out to my guy, Enzo. He kind of beat me up. He said, Ed, show me the analog filter. So we got some analog filter going. And then we gave a good possible solution see you Scott we gave a possible solution for going ahead and bringing in some external audio uh, via via the uh, mic line balance inputs in the back there and then run it through the analog uh, excuse me the analog filter so uh, and then running out the analog filter out so I think you're gonna be able to do that I just haven't done it yet and so give that a shot Enzo and report back to us so, you know we can kind of figure that going and uh, we're just gonna have some more fun I think for Sobe Clubber, maybe we can try and do that tomorrow if we can get with our bro and we can uh, do, do a little bit of experiments with the Phantom as far as doing like a side chain. So if, if you're still there, Sobe Clubber, you could tell us what, how you would, how do you want it to work, you know, as far as what you're trying to do. And that kind of, that kind of helps all of us uh, here too. So we can kind of figure out stuff in there. Uh, it's always you, cool. John. Yeah. So just let it, let us know. Uh, Let's see, let's see everything. Games, that's right. We keep talking about that. The '80s movies themes. Thank you, Enzo. Oh, what are we? Oh, what are we talking about? That we want to kind of do some. Well, we want to we want to pick out ones and do some research on you know what keyboards they use oh. and what are your favorite you know '80s movies uh, synth uh, themes or synth uh, soundtracks or anything like that. Hey, and let's. I tell you what. Let's do this. Uh, let's do. Let's do that on Tuesday. So Tuesday, Tuesday show, that'll be episode 21. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and do a show of movie themes, and we'll just nerd out and talk about movie themes. And then let's see if we can recreate some of those sound Scots with the Jupiter X, X with the Jupiter sure. X and the uh, Phantom, you know, just, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, we'll see. We'll just kind of have, we'll kind of just have a, a little bit of fun. It's okay, so be clever. The connections are, are really tough right now. But anyway, yeah. So yeah, so Tuesday episode t Tuesday episode 21 will be movie movie day, movie theme day. We'll kind of have some fun and nerd out on that. And uh let's see. I think that's about it for now. So oh, look, looks, Scott's already getting started. Sorry. Look. Enzo said he was starting the exorcist exorcist theme last night, so I felt I had to play it. That that you know what theme scares me is the Omen, the the, the old movie, the Omen. Oh, I'd have to go back and listen to that one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll 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 bring out some of those. Uh, let's see what happens. We might get kicked off of YouTube on that episode because if we do too good a job of uh, recreating some stuff, that <laughs> yeah, YouTube will be like, hey, you can't do that. But we're musicians. All right. Okay. So anyway, I want to let all of you guys know this is Ed Diaz and. Scott Barry. Scott Barry. Uh, just wishing everybody to stay safe out there. Practice with social distancing. Uh, stay safe at home. Uh, wash your hands. Wa don't touch your face, you know, unless you wash your hands. And uh, don't. if you go to the store, practice social distancing. 
Uh, wear gloves, wear a mask. Everybody just be good. Yeah, copyright police, absolutely, Enzo. And so everybody just be safe out there, and we will talk to you soon. Uh, tomorrow, uh, put in comments what you want us to talk about tomorrow because we're trying to figure out all the kind of fun stuff that we, we're going to want to do with you guys, and there's a bunch. But if we're having a good time with the Phantom and with the Jupiter X. There's a lot we can go for over there. So anyway... You guys be safe. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see you tomorrow on Synth Talk. This is Ed Diaz and Scott Barry. Here, look. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Take care. Yeah, take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right, bye. And... It's so funny. It's so funny. That's a whole. Let me stop. This is pretty crazy. Stop streaming.